Hi, everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Robert O'Dowd. Um, some of you know me, I think, because um, I've, I know that uh, I have a lot of friends there today in Valencia. I'm very sorry that I, I cannot be there in person, but I'm afraid I have other um, responsibilities, other work responsibilities to deal with this week, and I won't be able to, to, to go to Valencia. Uh, I should also th begin by saying thank you to Anna and Phoenix and all the i3D team for, for inviting me to take part in, in this event. I've seen the program and it looks excellent. I think you'll, there's going to be an awful lot of very interesting presentations there today and tomorrow. Um, now, I, I'm, I'm going to share my screen, so bear with me for a second so I, uh, so I can be, begin my presentation. Um, so my topic today is virtual exchange and its role in teacher education. Um, um, I think this is like a very, for those of you that are familiar with virtual exchange, and I have a funny feeling that most of you are, um, and I know that Sarah has already spoken to you today, I think, about uh, um, virtual exchange, and so you're quite aware of the definitions and things like that. Okay, so I won't spend very long on that. Okay, this is a very basic definition that I use from my own work. Um, go back. Uh, there it is. Um, so basically, engaging groups of students in online collaboration and interaction with partners from other cultures or other geographical locations as an integral part of coursework, okay, and under the guidance of educators, okay. So that is the uh, kind of a, a kind of a catch-all definition of virtual exchange that, that I use quite a lot. Um, however, when we talk about virtual exchange and initial teacher, teacher education, normally what we talk about are uh, classes of, ins of, of um, you know, classes of initial of students that are training to be teachers, working with other classes that are training to be teachers around the world, okay? Now, this is very popular, and I think if you look through the literature on virtual exchange, you're going to find that a huge number of the publications are actually about this, are about, you know, uh, teacher trainers engaging their students in these type of, of projects, right? Um, why, do, why is it so popular? Well, I suppose it, um, there's, there's the idea that hopefully that if student teachers experience virtual exchange and experience the benefits of virtual exchange during their studies, that when they go on to, to become teachers themselves, that they will also use it. OK, so there's that argument and there's that uh, logic behind it. But I think I think it's also related to the idea of innovation that, you know, teachers, you know, teacher trainers are working when they're working in themes of innovation. They're also interested in the idea of virtual exchange and all that area of activity. So they kind of link well together. OK, but what I want to draw your attention to today, and I want to show you a couple of practical examples, is that there are other ways of integrating virtual exchange into initial teacher education. Um, so it doesn't always have to be one class of students working with another class of students, right? And I want to show you some examples of how we can connect in-service teachers with student teachers, okay? So have you know these two different groups of, 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 of people working together. And also the idea of combining physical mobility and virtual exchange in, in teacher education programs, okay, blended mobility as they call it nowadays, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the, the Valiant project that we are working on at the moment, tell you a little bit about that and what we're doing. And we're go I'm going to show you uh, the outcomes of one particular case study from the Valiant project where student teachers collaborated online with in-service teachers or during a semester, and we'll look at the outcomes of that. And then I'm going to explore how blended intensive programs can be applied in initial teacher education. Blended intensive programs, in case you haven't heard about them already, they're a new part of the Erasmus Plus program. They're just been beginning this year, I think, is the first year that they're being put into practice. And I'll explain a little bit about what they are and, and how we in Leon, with our partners, uh, are planning on putting that into practice. Okay, so I don't have any results from that yet, but I, at least I can show you what we're planning to do. OK, so very briefly to introduce Valiant. Valiant is about um, promoting virtual innovation and support networks. Now, what are they? they? We define them as virtual exchange programs, which bring together in-service school teachers, student teachers, and ex educational experts in facilitated online collaboration around real-world educational issues. So basically, what, what we're doing is we're trying to connect 
student teachers, teachers, and, and experts in, in, in different areas, bring them together in different sorts of projects and different forms of collaboration. And um, I should say that Valiant is what we call a European policy experiment. Now, um, I, I'm emphasizing here the idea of experiment because we are different, you know, we're trying out different formats, different models of how this can be done. And we're trying to find the ones that are most successful by carrying out research and evaluating their impact and the, the learning outcomes of people that participate in them. And then hopefully the ministries of education that are in our projects from Galicia and Castilla Leon in Spain, Vienna, uh, Baden-Württemberg and Norway, hopefully they will, you know, take this and help us to make it a little bit more sustainable and make these models, um, you know, long, a long-term offer for, for teachers and for student teachers. Um, of course, we also have a very good research team coming from Sweden, from Malmö, from Spain, Portugal, Norway, Slovenia, Cyprus, Germany, and the UK as well. Okay, so uh, just to explain the, the background or the theory that, that motivated me to, to write this proposal, to, to write this project proposal and to, and to try and get it accepted. It's very much based on what we call a sociocultural approach to teacher education. And if any of you have ever uh, are interested in initial teacher education, I really recommend a book by Karen Johnson, which is called uh, Social Cultural Approaches to Teacher Training or Teacher Education. I'm not too sure now. And, you know, it's basically, you know, well, this is her key argument here, I think, or the one that I take away as being the key argument. She says that learning to teach is based on the assumption that knowing, thinking and understanding come from participating in social practices of learning and teaching in specific classroom and school situations. So what she's saying here is that, you know, people don't learn to teach by studying textbooks or by studying, you know, um, abstract ideas. They learn to teach by actually participating in ed education, by engaging with other teachers, okay? So by being actively engaged in educational activity, by forming part of communities of practice, okay? So where they engage with teachers, with parents, with students, and they deal with real world classroom issues, okay? So this is the type of approach to initial teacher education uh, I try to employ, I try to employ in my classes. And um, this is what uh, the, the Valiant project was based on, okay? So an emphasis, on facilitating collaboration and interaction, okay, between the theory that we study in our classes and the periods at university and the realities of the classroom. So this, this you know, looking at the interactions between the theory and the realities, the theory and the practice, and, you know, helping students get access to this, these realities, whatever they happen to be, okay, look for ways of doing that, right? So that's basically what the, the project and, uh, is based on, the theory of the project, so to speak. Um, this is the data analysis that we have uh, been we are carrying out. This is an ongoing project, by the way. That we have three rounds of virtual exchange going around, uh, going on, with approximately I would say six to seven virtual exchange in each round. So you're talking about between eight, eighteen and twenty-one, twenty-two different virtual exchanges happening in total. Um, and this is how we are organizing things. So that, uh, we are we have you know, quantitative and qualitative data collection. The quantitative is a pre-post test, looking at um, people's um, uh, conceptions of whether they have developed their intercultural competence, their transversal skills, like Sarah mentioned today, um, but also aspects related to feeling isolated because, you know, when, when, when this project was being, was being proposed, the idea of teacher isolation was very important. Right? It was given great priority. So overcoming feelings of isolation, and things like that. And we are triangulating that data then with qualitative uh, reflective diaries, interviews, open questions from the pre-post test and student portfolios. So we have a huge amount of data that we're working on and that we, that's why we need such a big project uh, research team to, to go through all of this. Okay. Um, now, so far, um, we, I've only got a quantitative data, so to speak, from the first round of exchanges. <clears throat> Pardon me. And um, as you can see, the levels of satisfaction are, are very high. People are, you know, we've only got, but this is data, by the way, from 101 teachers and 135 student teachers, okay, in the pre-post test. And in the post test, they're telling us that they learned a lot from virtual exchange. It was useful for their future career as a teacher, the student said. They would recommend it. I am um, satisfied with my virtual exchange experience. 
you know, the you know very high, um, you know, results there, very positive results. Uh, we've also got <clears throat> initial findings, like I said, from this initial round. Um, as regards transversal skill development, okay, all of these are were seen to be improved by teachers and for students who took part. Right, the most improved, the most the most improvement was observed in the areas of problem solving, problem uh, followed by time management skills. Okay, these are the the skills that you know teachers and students report most developing in their virtual exchanges. The same with intercultural competence. Um, you know, we see that. It, it disimproved for teachers and more so, even more so for students. Okay, the most improvement was on the the variable of IC behavior followed by collaboration. However, what we're noticing is that there's very little change in what we call perspective taking. Okay, and this is, I think, maybe another time, another topic for another talk. You know, you know, why do students find it hard to develop empathy? Why do they hard to understand other people's perspectives in virtual exchange? And how can we better shape our virtual exchanges so that's more successful? Okay, now. What I'm going to do now is, and I have to keep an eye on the time. I appreciate that um, my time is limited, and especially for an online talk. I don't want to talk too long. Um, but for an example of a, of a valiant virtual exchange, okay, I'm going to talk about an exchange between my students in Leon, so uh, classes of initial teacher education, studying to be future foreign language teachers in secondary schools in Spain. And they worked with another class of future foreign language teachers at the University of Bochum in Germany with my colleagues, uh, Markus Ritter and Sina Werner, and also in-service high school teachers. So we had uh, we had them in, shall we say, in working groups where you would have two Germans, two Spanish, and one or two um, uh, in-service teachers from different part, different countries in Europe, okay? And this is how it, it worked, as you can see at the bottom of the screen there. Spanish and German classes meet during class time to prepare tasks in working groups. So uh, we, we, we our two classes coincided in time, which is very useful. So that means our students could get into their working groups in Zoom and prepare the topic for that week and what how they were going to interact with their in, uh, in-service teachers. Then they would have to arrange a meeting with the in-service teachers, which was normally on the weekends, where they would work through the task together. And then finally, and the next day in class, students would reflect together on what they discussed, what they'd learned, and things like that. They would discuss that with us, the teacher trainers. What did they talk about? Well, as usual, we had our getting to know you phase. We had a, an article about the, what they call the myth of the digital native. And that was very interesting because you had um, both teachers and student teachers talking about what being a good digital user or digital learner uh, involved. And there was, there was some very interesting outcomes from that. We then had the students interview the st teachers about how they dealt with uh, the COVID crisis and how they dealt with teaching during the COVID crisis. And the students, of course, then also talked about how they, they had to learn during the COVID crisis, the lockdowns. And then finally, they had, uh, our students had to work in, in their working groups to develop materials that the teachers would then try out in their classes and they would give feedback to our students about what they had learned, okay? So they're the, the different tasks that we used. Uh, the research questions for, the, for our case study, and basically looking at um, does taking part in this type of virtual exchange develop intercultural competence and also didactic competence, okay? How to teach better, you know? And then how do students' perspectives on teaching foreign languages and their future profession change through this? So what did our students learn about, shall we say, like we said earlier, the realities of the classroom, you know, and did it motivate them more uh, or did it, shall we say, put them off their profession, yeah? Um, so as regards contribution to student uh, intercultural development of students, right? Uh, the students reported increased knowledge of cultural differences in educational practices. Okay, so in Spain, you know, there might be a greater influence uh, emphasis on grammar teaching, for example. Whereas in Slovenia, there's a different one, but more focus on oral skills, like the, the quote here is mentions. But also, uh, what I found in this, and this I think is something that is appearing more and more increasingly is a kind of a rejection of intercultural learning in many cases. Right? Look at this. Uh, I can say that because I was an Erasmus student in Germany, I learned a lot about this situation, about different cultures in that country. So this is not really brand new to me. 
Right, this is a student from Spain. So what I'm finding is, and in this study, but also in other studies that I'm involved in, that students that have done Erasmus or students that are living in, shall we say, more culture, multicultural areas seem to seem to assume that they have ticked the box of intercultural learning, that they've learned that part. They don't need to learn any more about intercultural difference or how to work with people in intercultural contexts. And uh, which, of course, I hope we would agree is not true. Right? This is a lifelong learning process, right? And these are skills that have to be refined and worked on and attitudes that have to be developed constantly. But this is an issue. And I think, um, you know, 20 years ago when I started doing virtual exchange, this didn't happen. I didn't find this in the data, but I'm finding it more and more now because maybe students are more mobile and, you know, well, there's different reasons, but now is not the time maybe to go into that. Um, the contribution to student teachers' didactic competence, well, the increased, of course, increased knowledge of teaching methodologies, okay? Um, you know, how do people teach? You know, what, what different methodologies are available, okay? Uh, they, they learned about that. And also, they really valued the feedback from what they called, what we could call experienced peers. What we have learned this week will be very valuable in our future career as teachers. I consider that we have learned more from our teacher's experience and from watching a video on a teaching approach. So here is the difference now between, you know, theory and watching videos and reading textbooks and hearing it from the horse's mouth, right, as we say, um, you know, hearing it from te real teachers, you know, this is how we do things. These are the problems. This is how it works. This is what goes wrong. This makes a much bigger impression on, on the student teachers than the actual, um, you know, the theory that there we are, or we also provide them with in class, of course. Okay, and um, right. So other things. So uh, the change in perspectives on teaching foreign languages and future profession. That was our second research question. Okay, so teachers are seen as role models. Okay, and that means increased motivation and confidence. Okay, I learned that it was important to be passionate about what you do. Right, and things like that. Now, I'm completely sure that I want to be a teacher. And also, they learned about what we call the realities of teaching. So far, it has slightly influenced my perspective on how I regard teaching as a career in the sense that I see the amount of work teachers have to actually carry before even coming to the actual classroom and are able to teach. Okay, so all the, I suppose the administrative load and the pre preparation involved in teaching. Okay. So these are issues that come up, you know, and how it changes students' perspectives, you know, by engaging with re real teachers. <laughs> okay, now, the impact on the in-service teachers, now, I suppose you could say, well, it's obvious that, in, that student teachers are going to benefit from this type of project. But I'm also, I was very concerned, and I am very concerned, of what can in-service teachers get out of these projects, okay? Well, these are the things they mentioned. The student perspective on activities and classroom practices. So getting, you know, the student point of view, uh, the enthusiasm and positive attitude of the student teachers was motivating for them. And students' familiarity with recent methodological developments and theory. So students were actually very, at times more relaxed and more confident talking about, you know, issues of intercultural development, task-based learning, things like that, the, you know, this kind of vocabulary than the actual teachers were. And then opportunity to share problems and challenges with other colleagues, because, of course, these teachers were meeting student teachers, but also other teachers from around Europe. And that was one of the things that one of our aims was that they would overcome isolation this way. So I'm going to show you a very short video here. I hope you're going to be able to hear it. OK, I, I think you will. I'm going to put it up to the top. Uh, where we have. Uh, so in-service teachers, okay, talking about what do you learn from collaborating with student teachers? OK, just a very brief video. The learning process is mutual. I get a lot of feedback from students who are still in, in sort of the other side of the learning process as well. Although some of them may have a teaching experience, which is very bad, so they can share it with, um, you know, us more, more experienced teachers. Um, they're still very young and full of ideas and, and practical um, uh, examples of how they would deal with the situation. Yeah, I gave them some of my... Uh, when I have a conundrum, I share I shared it with them, and they offered some advice. So um, I I can take that into my class, um, and and just try it out and see how that works. Um, so 
I think it's it's very good because um, they can um, they're closer in age and probably uh, in some ways they're closer to my students and they are to me. But then on the other hand, uh, they're closer to my, uh, me as a colleague. Um, as we, we, in a way, we're like peers, and we can also share the experience that they've had uh, with in their teaching. Our meetings were interesting. It was interesting to hear how, for example, testing went at universities in the different countries, and what the students thought that that worked well or didn't work well. That was very interesting for Kathleen and me because we're sitting on the other side <laughs> trying yeah. to get grades out of the students. Um, so that was pretty cool. And I was always looking forward to the meeting with the students. You know, we read the same article, we watched the same video, but the students looked at it um, at, from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not that old. I'm only 25. I'm not that far away from university. But still, um, it is very different in the way of thinking. So they mm -hmm. just took a whole different approach. And then we just started discussing it. And then uh, the hour was over already. So <laughs> I think we could have discussed a lot more. <laughs> um, something more practical. I mean, we were like talking about the theory over and over, and sometimes I had the feeling that we were repeating the same. So maybe if we had like a problem uh, to find a solution and maybe we can work on that, I think that would be like more useful for them and for us. Okay, that's an interesting Okay, that's fine, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, good. So, um, so, th so that is um, one aspect. Okay, one way of bringing of you know of bringing virtual exchange into initial teacher education that I think we need to explore more. Okay, and that has potential, as as you've seen there. The second one I want to talk to you to, about today is something that we we're just beginning to work on, right? Which is the idea of blended mobility and initial teacher education. Now, for those of you not familiar with the idea of blended mobility, <clears throat> in the new Erasmus Plus program that it came out last year, they talked uh, they talk about blended intensive programs. Okay, which is the whole idea of combining physical mobility, short periods of physical mobility, uh, with structured online collaboration. Okay, um, they say that any student may participate in a blended intensive program. Physical mobility must last between five and 30 days. And you combine that with a compuls no, a compulsory virtual component facilitating collaborative online learning exchange and teamwork, which for me is virtual exchange. Okay, that second part, that virtual component facilitating collaborative online learning exchange and teamwork. Okay. And students should receive a, a three ECTS for participating in it, a minimum of three ECTS. And now, so we're trying to, the, my partners in Bochum again, and, and my, ourselves in Leon, we're trying to put that into, into practice. So we've come up, and as again, as part of the Valiant project, we've put this into the Valiant project as well. Um, it's a, innovate, um, a course called Innovation and in Foreign Language Teaching. Okay. And we have our future foreign language teachers from Bochum and Leon, but also because we advertised this, we drew up a program and uh, we advertise this in unit collaboration mailing lists and, and uh, other ones as well. Uh, we, we have participants from Ulu in Finland, Sassari in it Italy, uh, Lithuania, and Trinity College in Dublin as well. Okay, so we have a very nice mix there of student teachers. We also have a small number of uh, um, in-service teachers participating in the groups as well. Um, however, the problem is we, we, are, we are concerned that the funding, the Erasmus funding for travel, that all of our all these students are going to get access to, we don't think that in-service teachers are going to be able to access that. So that's why we are, you know, not, you know, not, um, you know, over encouraging in-service teachers to take part. So um, this is what it looks like, our course, basically. Uh, it's going to be running this uh, autumn. It's going to start on the 15th of November and run until the, the 9th of January. 
no, a little bit longer, 15th of January, sorry. Okay, and the, in the course, we introduce new developments in foreign language teaching. We get the participants to reflect and compare different teaching practices in their countries. And we give them firsthand, as usual, experience in collaborating in English with international colleagues. So preparing them to become part of international networks when they graduate, we hope. Uh, the themes of, our, of the course, uh, the, of the innovations, shall we say, are gamification, uh, recent developments in the Common European Framework of Reference, uh, fandom in foreign language education, and open educational resources for foreign language teachers. Okay, and so, like we said, we're going to have student teachers, in-service teachers, and guest speakers. How does it work? This is what it looks like. Uh, we have online lectures and discussion with guest speakers. Okay, so each week for over a four-week period, we're going to have a guest speaker who's an expert on one of those topics that I just mentioned. They'll give an online talk. All the students from all over Europe will log on, follow the talk, and they've been given um, you know, a task based around the talk, so to speak, and then they will meet in their groups at the end of each week right, and discuss the, the talk, and we've given them a worksheet to work on based on it. Then uh, that goes until the 9th of December. Then they'll have a three-week, uh, a two-week period where they will have to start planning their own project. Each working group, which is, I should, I should be clear, is like, you know, a mixture of maybe two Germans, two Spaniards, one Lithuanian and one Italian, for example, international groups. Uh, they have to come up with their own project based on what they've seen in the lectures, okay, and one of the topics are inspired by or, you know, related to one of the topics, at least, that they've seen in these lectures. They have to come up with a project proposal or materials, teaching materials for a classroom. So they will collaborate about that online. And then, finally, after Christmas, from the 9th to the 13th of January, uh, the students from all over Europe will travel to Leon, and there we have prepared for them. Um, we, there we have prepared for them a week where they will work together in intensive group work. But as I'll show you in a minute, we also have different activities prepared for them. So there you have online lectures and discussion, online collaboration, and then physical mobility, a short period of physical mobility for your three ECTS. And for each of the stages, like I said, we're structuring this where they, you know, read articles beforehand and then they see the talk online. They can talk to the to the to the invited speaker and then they will meet in their own working groups and discuss things. Uh, the second stage in their project, they have to meet up and agree on what the project is going to be about, how they're going to organize it, how they're going to structure their work. And then in Leon, like I said, we have a, a full program of activities where we have guest lecturers coming to speak to them. Uh, we have cultural events and um, also, of course, fun things happening in the evenings for people. Uh, but then lots of time as well for them to work in their groups. So the projects they've started already in the online phase, they can finish then and complete. And on the final day, present Okay, to an invited audience, we're going to have lecturers coming, we're going to have school teachers coming to give them feedback and things like that. Okay, so that is our, shall we say, application of what we think a blended intensive program can be. Okay, um, we've, we've, we've had to be, of course, very detailed about, you know, what students have to do. All of them will have to complete a portfolio based on all their work, and it is that uh, portfolio will, which will demonstrate whether, which will decide whether they get their uh, ECTS credits or not for it. Of course, I can give my ECTS credits to my students in Leon, but the people from Lithuania, for example, have to go back with the certificate that the University of Leon will give them, and they have to go into the office and make sure that those ECTS are recognized in some way. Different universities are recognizing them in different ways. Some, for example, have um, like extra, extra credits that students that don't belong to normal courses as part of the degree. And they can, you know, you collect three of those credits by doing this course. So different universities, we've worked a lot with international offices on this, and we've had great support from them. And they are the ones that are finding ways of, you know, getting the credit recognized. They are also helping us with the travel. OK, so, for example, um, all of the students have to go to their own universities and say, I'm taking part in this BIP, this BIP. And they will be given travel fees and they will be given 70 euros a day for um, survival, right? For accommodation and for food. So um, 
uh, we, you know, in Leon, we're trying to find accommodation that will fit those prices. We're trying to get them. Uh, because Leon is the host, we are giving a small amount of money. I think, I don't have it written down in front of me. I think it's approximately 40 euros per student that comes to Leon. I think that's uh, that's it, approximately that. So, um, you know, we'll have that those funds where we can maybe buy, them, you know, use them to buy them lunch or to, to organize cultural trips or, or day trips or whatever. And so that's it. I've probably been talking far too long, especially for an online talk. I'm very sorry. Um, just to conclude by saying, you know, virtual exchange works for initial teaching education. It makes sense to be using an edit. But I think we have to be trying to think a little bit out of the box and to keep on innovating in the way we do this by trying out new models, like I've shown you today, new configurations, new tools. OK, Christy Hauregi is talking to you about um, immersive technologies and virtual realities and things in virtual exchange. These are the type of things we need to be experimenting with so that we, you know, we can start using these as part of our virtual exchanges. Um, we, but of course, then we also have to see how these new models can be made sustainable. Uh, it's no use killing yourself for two years trying to develop a new model of virtual exchange. And then as soon as the project ends and the funding ends, um, you know, then it just dies. OK, we have to find ways of making these sustainable. And finally, um, I, what I'm something I'm very curious about, and I think we should be investigating in this area, is you know, is, is it true that if we get our students to use virtual exchange in our classes, will they go and use it themselves when they start working? Okay, that's something I think is really worth exploring. So thank you very much. This is the the link to the Valiant website and our Twitter feed and my email address if any of you want to make contact. But I think I'm going to try and log on and talk to you after this talk today. Okay, so thank you very much. <laughs>